All right, today we're applying the concept of centripetal forces to the situation where we have a car traveling up over the top of a crested hill. And in this problem, we're going to solve for the magnitude of the normal force between the car tires and the road, just as the car goes over the top of the hill. And we're also going to solve for the maximum speed of this car that will allow the car to go over the top of the hill without becoming airborne. Now the key in this entire problem is that anytime something's moving in a circle, there's a centripetal force responsible for causing that object to move in a circular path. So in the situation where we have a satellite in orbit around some central planet, it's gravity that pulls that satellite inward, causing it to move in a circular orbit. The issue in this problem, however, is that we don't have a single force which is acting centripetally, pulling this car toward the center of the circle, which is actually down here in the center of this arc. Instead, we have multiple forces acting on the car, and together they all contribute to the total centripetal force. You see, looking at the free body diagram on this car, there's a force downward by gravity acting toward the center of the circle, and then there's the force upward by the normal force, or really the hill holding up the car. And it's those two forces combining, or really competing with each other, that provide this centripetal force on this car that makes it move in a circle. Now to calculate the required magnitude of this normal force, what we're going to do is turn to Newton's second law, or the sum of all forces on an object equals ma. Now this ma term is really what we would refer to as the centripetal force, that's the car's mass times its acceleration. Now I've shown this car is moving at 20 meters per second, but realize even though it's moving at 20 meters per second to the right, even if that's a constant speed, the car is still accelerating, not in a straight line, but in a circle. See so if this car didn't accelerate at all, the car moving along at 20 meters per second would just move along in a nice neat straight line. The car has to accelerate in order to stay in contact with this hill. And the direction of that acceleration is towards the center of the arc, or centripetally. Now unlike with an orbit where there's only one force acting centripetally, in the case of this car, we have two forces, gravity and the normal force. And the important part here is they're in opposite directions. Gravity is acting inward toward the center of the circle, and the normal force is acting outward. Now I find it's easiest when dealing with competing forces like this in circular motion to say that inward toward the center of the circle is the positive direction, meaning the force by gravity is in the positive direction and the normal force is in the negative direction. So going back over to Newton's second law, the sum of all forces is actually going to be mg, the force by gravity, minus the normal force, which we're trying to solve for. So we set those equal to our centripetal force, that's m times v squared over r. So rearranging this equation for the normal force, we can then plug in the numbers actually given in this problem. So we've got a 2,000 kilogram car moving along at 20 meters per second over a hill that's 50 meters in radius. So substituting in those numbers, we find the normal force is 3,600 newtons. And there's an important point here. This these 3,600 newtons has to be less than the weight of the car. So if the normal force was equal to the weight of the car, the forces on the car would be balanced, and the car would just cruise along in a nice straight line. But they're not. The car is in fact accelerating downward. Now the next part of this problem, and this is a little bit silly, is solving for the maximum velocity of this car as it goes over the top of the hill. Now I say it's silly, really I mean it's just an absolutely idiotic problem, but this shows up in a lot of textbooks, so I'm going to work this out anyway. And then I'll explain to you why this is actually a kind of stupid problem that shouldn't exist. You see, as this car goes over the top of the hill, just for an instant, if it's going just the right speed, there doesn't need to be a normal force holding the car up. At just the right speed, the normal force acting on the car can be zero. That is to say the car is just starting to become airborne. And at that point, mg, the force by gravity on the car, is equal to the centripetal force. You'll notice, the m's cancel out, we get v is equal to the square root of gr, and subbing in the numbers from this problem, we find the fastest this car can go over the top of the hill is 22.1 meters per second. But like I said, this is a stupid problem, and let me explain why. 
You see, by working out this problem, you'd be led to believe that if this car stays under 22 meters per second, it's going to be in contact with the hill at all points. But that's not true. It's still going to become airborne. See, as the car moves along the hill over here, at a position right here, this car is still going to have to move in a circle. Now, the only force that can act centripetally on this car, or toward the center of the circle over here, is going to be gravity. But gravity is always going to be straight down. So as the car rolls off the edge of this hill here, gravity is still acting straight down. And so rather than having gravity act entirely in the centripetal direction, only a component of gravity acts centripetally. Meaning as the car rolls off the edge of the hill, the centripetal force acting on the car is going to get smaller and smaller. That is to say, as the car rolls down the hill here, the car is actually going to have to be moving slower and slower in order to stay in contact with the hill. But regardless, I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.